I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different organic reactions. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation, so if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. This reaction is a classic example of what's known as a Pummerer rearrangement. That's P U double M's E R E R. And a Pummerer rearrangement always begins with an alkyl sulfoxide group. And the overall rearrangement generates what's known as an alpha acyloxy thioether. Again, that's an alpha acyloxy thioether. And I bet you can't say that three times fast. And importantly, these Pummerer rearrangements always undergo this reaction using acetic anhydride, which I also can write as AC2O. And to begin this reaction, it's important to remember that this is just one of the resonance forms that we can draw for this molecule. Importantly, we can also draw a resonance structure Structure, where we actually shift these electrons in this pi bond to the oxygen. And this is thus going to create a positively charged sulfur at this position and a negatively charged oxygen at this position, which will now have three lone pairs of electrons. And then the rest of the molecule will remain the same. And visualizing this resonance structure allows us to see that this oxygen can now act as a nucleophile and attack the electrophilic carbon at this position, kicking up these pi electrons. So then the product of this reaction is going to maintain our charge because we have a positive charged sulfur and what's going to eventually become a negatively charged oxygen and most of our molecule is going to look the same where now we have this sulfur attached to this oxygen which is now attached to this carbon position where we generated the negatively charged oxygen we also have the methyl group that was still there and then we have the rest of our anhydride which is going to be oxygen followed by the rest of our molecule, which looks like this. And remember, this negatively charged oxygen has three lone pairs on it. And what that means is that we have an opportunity for those electrons to come back down and kick off a really great leaving group, which is why anhydrides are so useful and so reactive. Because what can happen now is those electrons can come down to reform our carbon to oxygen double bond, and that's gonna kick off the rest of this acetate group as a leaving group. So I'll draw in that acetate because we're actually gonna come and use it later as a reactant as part of this overall transformation. But this is the acetate leaving group that leaves. And then what we're left with is the rest of this molecule. So we have this R1 species attached to the sulfur, which is gonna be positively charged. Our sulfur to oxygen bond, which we formed in this reaction, is now gonna be attached to this carbonyl carbon, which has reformed that CO double bond. And then we also still have this CH3 group here. And then don't forget, we still have this CH2 followed by our R2 also. And importantly, since this is positively charged, this what is effectively an alpha carbon hydrogen is going to be very acidic and susceptible to being deprotonated. And remember, we generated acetate at this position, which can act as a base that will be sufficient enough to come and deprotonate that. So what we'll do is we'll come and deprotonate this hydrogen, which will allow these electrons to now come down and form a new carbon to sulfur double bond. And in doing so, it will also subsequently kick off another acetate because now we're gonna end up with this carbon to sulfur double bond and this acetate will leave as a leaving group. So we've generated acetic acid by protonating this acetate. We regenerated another acetate at this position where it left as a leaving group, and that's gonna be important because we need it for our next step as well. So notice that we keep regenerating this acetate. And we also have still our new brand new sulfur to carbon double bond, which is still present in our system. And this sulfur, importantly, because even though we formed this carbon to sulfur double bond, since the acetate left as a leaving group is still gonna be positively charged, making it electrophilic, or at least making the neighboring carbon electrophilic. Because now what can happen is since this neighboring carbon is gonna be effectively turbocharged, Think of, it, think of it as like protonating a carbonyl group where you protonate the oxygen and make the carbon that's attached to it very electrophilic, what will end up happening is this acetate group can come in and attack this carbon, which will kick over the pi electrons, allowing us to make sulfur neutral, and also subsequently serving to form our final product, where OAC just stands for this acetate group, which will be added at this carbon position. So then bringing it all together, we can begin this reaction by visualizing a resonance structure that allows us to see that oxygen is nucleophilic, which will come and attack acetic anhydride. Subsequently, the pi electrons will come down and kick off acetate as a leaving group. From here, since our sulfur is positively charged, the alpha carbon that's adjacent to it is going to generate a carbon to hydrogen bond that's going to be acidic enough to be deprotonated by acetate, which will allow us to do what's effectively an elimination reaction, where you're forming a new carbon to sulfur bond and also kicking off acetate as a leaving group again. Subsequently, the acetate group can come and attack that alpha carbon, 
kicking over the pi electrons to give us what's ultimately our alpha acyloxy thioether. And again, this is what's known as the Pummerer reaction. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, give it a thumbs up down below. And for next week, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this organic reaction. And make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.